Welcome to the Piston Fanatic. I'm your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. We've been a diehard Piston fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been the varsity basketball coach of a very successful program in northern Michigan. I want to really thank you, Piston fans, for hanging in there with me. Those of you that are loyal, faithful listeners, especially that, you know, this has been just a struggle. This is brutal watching this team now without you know, so many of our better, better players. So Pistons fall tonight, 129 to 102 to the Boston Celtics. And Boston has the fifth best point differential in NBA history. So it's really a bad matchup there, 56 and 14. But if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you again for listening. But no Duran. So Duran hasn't missed many games, but he, you know, in a, quite a while, but he his back, lower back problems. But again, we're without... Asar and Pontecchio and Grimes and Stu. So those are five of our top seven players. We are missing five of our top seven players. So that is, you know, and, and when we're not, when we don't have as good a team anyway. So, you know, it's an, a, one thing different for a, a team, even like the Celtics, if they were missing five of their top seven players, they still have more better players than we do. So, you know, we, it was amazing. We were, you know, one point game at the end of the first quarter and we were, Hanging in there, and we were, you know, Cade and um, Wiseman were really going off. Wiseman had a great game tonight. He really has been showing a lot. You know, he had 24 points and nine rebounds and a bunch of offensive rebounds, and so he's been playing great basketball. But we're going to talk today about, um, we are going to talk today about should the Pistons trade Jalen Duran. So that's been a topic around the NBA, uh, around Piston fans, and we'll we'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, I just, again, I just want to say it is just so hard. I, I was so excited that when we got Pontecchio and Grimes and then we had everybody healthy for a minute and it looked like the rest of the year we were going to get to find out we've really been cheated out of finding out so much about this team, either by player injuries or the coach or just a variety of different things. But I thought we finally have a, a good nucleus of players to put out on the court and then now like, like I said when five of your seven best players are hurt that is hard but anyway let's um talk about Jalen Duran. so again a lot of Piston fans because his defense is not good his defense isn't and it just is disappointing it's so disappointing um he's averaging his, his rookie year he averaged 0.9 blocks a game and this year he averages 0.8 blocks a game and even when he doesn't block shots, you don't see him contesting shots at the rim. You see Wiseman, if you, I don't know what the stat is, if there's a stat for contesting shots at the rim, Wiseman would have more, even though he plays way less, because he, he jumps up and makes him shoot up high over his hand. And during, for whatever reason, he's just not in position. He just can't load up quick enough. He doesn't anticipate things. I don't know. But here's the deal. Number one, people say, you know, let's trade him. So the trade value for a center is not good. It's like, again, the trade value for a running back in the NFL. We've got to see it this offseason. And for free agents, say there's a low trade value because the teams just don't value centers. And so we're not going to get, it's not like you're going to get a, a whole bunch of high draft picks or somebody suggested, yeah, we'll trade Duran and then we'll get a power forward that can block shots and shoot threes. That's not happening. And everybody in the league wants a center and it would be great if Duran could shoot threes and maybe someday he will be he's just 20 years old but he he can't now but how many centers and power forwards are there that can block shots and shoot threes they are at such a premium nobody's going to trade you one for Jalen Duran what are you going to get for him well how many draft picks would a team give he is a good player he is a really good center you know he is in the 83rd percentile in pick and roll offense. He's in the 82nd percentile in offensive rebounding. He he's just he's does a lot of things incredible. He's one of the top five in shooting percentage. He's you know he's averaging 14 points a game, 12 rebounds a game, shooting 63 percent and 78 percent on free throws. He's improved his free throw percentage. You know he's shown a whole bunch of new moves with his footwork and reverse pivots and stuff. And he's just 20. He's just 20, so it's just real hard. Another thing, he's next year, he's going to make $4.5 Find me a center that can get 14 rebounds 
I mean, 12 rebounds, 14 points, and shoot 63% and 78% on free throws that, and get him for $4.5 million. Find one of those for me. And then he's, um, the net following year, he's going to get um, $6.4 million. Again, so he, he will be a bargain, but then he will be extension eligible, and then we maybe we'll have to pay him more. But it's just um, incredible to think, you know, it, you have to have somebody that wants to trade, and everybody just automatically says, let's trade, and trade Ivy. And I do think he would get more for Ivy by quite a bit, but his he, he has dropped off a cliff, and I, I believe in him. You know, I still think that he will be better, but I, I still think that he... You know, so his trade value is diminished, but I think that he still has some. But anyway, I, I just, again, I'd rather, who would you rather get? How many centers around the league? Name the centers that are going to be on the trade block. Um, Nick Claxton. So I like Nick Claxton. I really like him. He's a free agent. We could get him. He's going to make, somebody's going to sign him for $25 million or more. And maybe we should if that, you know, he's a better defender. Although during kind of dominated him when we beat the uh, Nets earlier this year. So it's just things to think about. Everything's not as easy as, you know, as, you know we're, we're such a, have such a terrible record. And so we got to do something. We got to change things up. Yes, we do. But I, I still think that if we, I'd love to see what happens with um, Kate Ivey, Asar, and God bless him and hope that he, the blood clot thing gets, you know, figured out and that he has no problems and he can just play because he loves to play in the future. And and even Stewart, you know, we miss Stewart tonight. I mean, he just is an NBA player. And he, even though he's never going to be a great scorer or whatever, he is still, you know, I, I, I love to have him come off the bench. But we just have some a bunch of good players. And Ivy's good. You know, they they could play good in Fontecchio. We haven't got to see Grimes. He's supposed to be back next week. Fontecchio is supposed to be back next week. It is heartbreaking that we haven't got to see these guys play. It's heartbreaking that they haven't got minutes. And even, so we find out Stanley Amude. Stanley plays his guts out, and he broke his hairline fracture in his ankle. And so now he's out for the year. So he was playing good and playing hard, and he can shoot threes and stuff. And, you know, he this was his chance, his big chance with all these guys out to shine, and then it gets kind of taken away from him. So it's really heartbreaking for a guy that's, you know, a young guy like him. So anyway, um, Monty did praise. He said there's nobody that's had a better attitude than Wiseman this year, that he comes in and he works his butt off every day, whether he doesn't get to play any minutes or for three games in a row or he gets to play a little bit. He his attitude has been the same. He said it's been stellar all year. And again, I know so many most most podcasts have trashed him and said he's the worst player in the NBA. I mean, they just mock him. They've mocked him all year. And you haven't heard that on this podcast. And I'm not saying he's the greatest player ever, but I haven't made fun of him or said that he was the worst player in the league. I pointed out that he's had good games and he hasn't always had good games, but you know, he doesn't always play a lot of minutes. So anyway, Awama, I like him. He plays hard and it's going to be interesting how I would give him a spot on the roster. And I don't know how good he's going to be, but you know, there's 15 spots on the roster. I like him. He, you know, better than even Troy Brown Jr. And some of these other guys, but he's played 31 minutes, four for nine, two for five on threes and four for six from the line. He had eight rebounds and one assist, two turnovers. We had seven guys with two turnovers tonight or some, some guys with three, but at least seven got different guys had at least two turnovers and some didn't play very many minutes. Uh, Trey Brown Jr. played pretty good. He had 20, 21 minutes, three for seven, two for six on threes, three rebounds, two assists, eight points. But Wiseman, 37 minutes. You know, he hasn't, I don't know when the last time he played that many, but 11 for 13. He, if that's not efficient, I don't know what is. And he was two for four from the line, which wasn't good, but nine rebounds, uh, four, four assists. But our big guys, again, uh, Ben Duran and Wiseman, and not as much Wiseman, but Stu, those guys have all turned the ball over way too much. And, um, that is another thing that Duran, I, I spoke about him, but he his turnovers have gone up his rookie year. He averaged 1.4, and this year he's averaging 2.1. 
and that is way too many for a guy that handles the ball this many times. And he tries to make some clever passes because he can do it, and I think his passing is going to be better, and I think his passing is going to be a real plus as he goes on, but he needs to be a little more, use a little bit better judgment. But, yeah, again, Wiseman turned it over 20 times tonight. But Cade, 29 minutes, he shot six for seven. He shot bad in the last four games or so. But here's the thing I, I said it all last off last season and during the off season, the key for Cade is getting his shot up, getting the arc on his shot. And you can use the excuse about his knee if it's a little bit hurt that he's not, you know, you, you get your lift from your legs. And I, but I, I still think it's just a thing that he has to really focus on and really work on and elevate that shot. And his, when he gets his shot up, the one three he made tonight, it was because Somebody was closing out on him, and they were extending his arm, so he had to shoot it up and over their arm, and so he got better arc on it. And so it was the, the toughest three he shot all night, and he was one for four on threes. So two for two from the line, six rebounds, six assists, two steals, three turnovers, uh, 15 points. So K didn't have a great game. He started out really, really great, and then, you know, he just faded away. We... You know, we had a really bad second quarter, and we had a bad fourth quarter. So, um, Metu, he played 19 minutes, 1 for 3, 0 for 2 on threes, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, 3 turnovers, playing 19 minutes. And I'm, I'm not impressed with him. Again, he hasn't played that much, but what I've seen, the way he moves and things that he does, I, I'm not impressed. We just got him. We needed a body, and so I would like the thought we could find a better body, but... We got him. Ivy, again, Ivy had a, a good game. I, you know, he didn't shoot his first shot. I mean, he had played like eight minutes and he hardly touched the ball. And so there is just something that we have to do, you know, and he has struggled, but still, he, especially with us shorthanded like this, why doesn't he touch the ball? Why don't we make an effort to have him touch the ball? Why doesn't we, why don't we call a set play where, my, where Ivy gets to handle the ball? But he was seven for 13. So he's, over 50%, even despite being only one for four on threes. But um, he's one for one from the free throw line. So it's going to hurt him, the, the fact that we all know officials are calling way less fouls, and it will hurt him because usually he gets, even out on a bad shooting night, he's like, he makes four for four or he makes seven free throws or, you know, he gets to the line a lot. But he had four rebounds, zero assists. But again, he didn't touch the ball hardly. Two turnovers, 16 points. Fournier, 28 minutes, three for seven. 0 for 3, and 1 rebound, 3 assists, and 6 points. So I, I was a little bit encouraged about him earlier in the year. Not so encouraged now. He, we have a team option for him for too much money. So my guess is we will not re-sign him unless uh, we cut him or yeah, his contract and and then he, he re-signs for a lesser amount. But the player I was really impressed with tonight was Jared Roden. He came in, man. He was on a mission. He was playing defense. He was getting down in a stance. He was moving his feet. He was real active. He's played 17 minutes, four for five shooting and five rebounds, one for two on threes and 17 minutes. That is impressive. And two turnovers though, just like I said, like a lot of our guys had. But Sasser, a decent game, 28 minutes, three for eight, two for four on threes, two rebounds, seven assists, in 28 minutes, that's really good, and two turnovers. So that's like everybody else. So interesting game, though. We we shot 51%. You know, we got blown out. So the, the biggest lead that the Celtics had was right at the buzzer. So they, you know, they beat us by 27, but we were closer than that a lot of the game. But it was the game was never in doubt, especially after the second quarter. But um, they only shot... 53% to our 51%, they shot 35% on threes, and we only shot 29%. So that that's a difference, but they made, they were 19 for 27 on free throws. We were 9 for 13, so they outscored us for 10 from the line. We out-rebounded them, 42 to 35, and the, but the turnovers were another thing, 18 turnovers to only 7 for Boston. So um, I'm not going to go long tonight. I know there's not much to say. Again, I really appreciate anybody that's still listening to me, and I still am proud of that. You know, we have this podcast and hang in there. Uh, Jalen Brown was magnificent to watch. He put on a show tonight, 33 points, but he makes some great moves. He hit some tough shots, even when we played good defense on him, and he is the real deal. But like I said, the the Celtics are 
one of the best teams historically in, in point differential. So that is, everybody's having a hard time with them. And then we got a team where we have, we're running out there with like two NBA players, real rotational players, you know, and, and they're not, and then they don't have good games. But it's really hard also to play a good game when you don't have good guys around you. It really is. It really makes a difference. And teams always, you know, they, Jalen Brown's always guarding Cade and he's a great defender or Derek White. Those are two top, two of the best defenders in the league. Derek White, they're talking about being all defense and he was on Cade a lot of times and they, they still trapped him. But we play the Pelicans. The Pelicans have been on a roll, but Brandon Ingram got hurt. So there's a lot of people, piston talk that some of you want us to try to get him. He only has one year left on his contract, though. So to trade for him doesn't make any sense. And is he going to sign with us as a free agent? I doubt it. So, but he he might not. He probably won't be playing Sunday. But Zion somehow has lost like 25 pounds since in the last month or so, and he is playing way better. And so we're going to look forward to playing the seeing the Zion show. But they got a lot of good players. And Trey Murphy is one of my favorite players. One I think is one of the most underrated players in the entire league. Talk about a guy that can play defense and shoot the three. He is incredible. So anyway, be the reason that somebody feels heard and give somebody a call somebody that you haven't talked to and make them feel better but anyway thank you for listening and go pistons